to a place where beauty and wonder come in equal measure. This is one of the most picturesque parts of Australia, but it's also one of the most inaccessible. Litchfield, the Northern Territory, about as far from anywhere as you can possibly be, but we're about to discover just how close we are to danger. It's a soft landing in a treacherous place. This is crop country. No roads wind their way here, and it's not just people who have to be flown in, but boats as well. To see crocodiles up close and personal, this is the only way. And the crocs are everywhere. Since hunting was banned in the Northern Territory in 1971, their numbers have boomed, and so have the problems. Stock taken, people killed. The only solution is to trap, catch and relocate, keeping crocs, humans and livestock out of each other's way. And in the Territory, one man has made it his job to do just that. His name is Matt Wright. This little crocodile should be snapping a few of the wieners around here. So we're just going to take her to a new place. And she can pull up home there for a bit. Matt's only 29, but in these parts, he's already a legend. And he sure knows how to make an entrance. You ready to go catch a crocodile? Take that as a yes. <laughs> Come on, get in. His boat is three metres long. The crocodiles that lurk yeah. here can be twice that size. Just got to be careful. If he comes out 100 mile an hour, he's going to hit the boat. Tip his ass over tit. For Matt, this is familiar territory. He's relocated many a rogue croc, but the one we're looking for today is believed to not just be the largest in Australia, but the largest in the world. And it's a killer. Horses, cattle, pigs, even other crocodiles. He will be one of the biggest ever caught. We saw him pull out a 14-foot crocodile out of one of the traps the other day, and he just killed that in an instant, didn't even hesitate. So he is a very big crocodile, and maybe we'll catch him, maybe we won't. He's a smart crocodile, he's been around for a long time. Do you think he's watching us? Yeah, most likely. They'll always know where you are, you'll never know where they are. See the channel, he comes in and out here. And this is where he'll be settling here and any pigs or geese or wallabies come walking around. He jumps up here and grabs yep, them right comes here. straight out, bang, hits them. Okay. With that noise of the helicopter and boats, I'd say he's, he's probably moved out for the day. And he'll come back in here tonight? Yeah. But we're going to have a hard time setting a trap here. That's my only concern. We might be right. I'll have to set it right around this whole tree. Matt gets to work assembling the most elaborate crocodile trap he's ever set. Take a look at the extraordinary length this boat will go to to catch Australia's biggest crop. This is like a military operation. Now we wait. So why do you do this? What, catch crocodiles? Yeah. Why do you put yourself in situations like this? I don't know. It's part of the job, I guess. I grew up with catching reptiles, and I guess crocodiles are sort of the last pinnacle. I enjoy catching them and working with them. Bit of a fascination. The attraction for Matt may be adventure and adrenaline, but his work is real and necessary. La Belle Station is a $70 million property on 55,000 hectares of wetlands. It produces beef for Australia's tables, but the reason Matt's come here is that too much of that meat is ending up in the belly of the crocs. 
someone's got to bite the bullet and level out this population that has, has exploded since hunting days. And that person is going to be and Matt. And that person is Matt, yeah. Property owner Peter Cam... Rather Matt than me, yeah. ..wants the worst of them relocated further north. You know, it is a very dangerous job that he does. Crocodile is a... You know, it, it hasn't got anything wrong since evolution. It's just evolved as a perfect machine. And, uh, and it's a killing machine, that's what it is. It's one big crocodile in here. He's been eating a lot of cattle. The station owner's asked us to come down and pull him out. So we've got a grappling hook. I'm going to get the grappling hook over him, get him to the surface. When after that, we'll throw a big uh, noose over his over his snout. And once we get a noose onto him, it's game on, and we should be able to pull him out. Fly low over the water, he tries to rouse the crocodile. He's there, but he's just not surfacing. So he reaches in with his bare hands. There's the tail. All right, now pull him. Pull him there. Pull him back. Pull him, keep going. Keep going. Jeez. All right, tape. Fast. The outer mouth is killed. That's the most deadliest part. So what sort of damage could this one do to a human? It just will twist any limb off your body. All right. This croc is two and a half metres long, but it's not the only one. In the mud and murk, Matt has spotted one that's even bigger. The tug of war is on again. Come on the back. Come on the back. See how much power these guys take to get out. These big animals are tired quickly, but when they get the energy back, look out, they'll hit you hard. Do you still get scared? More so adrenaline goes through you, but it's a, I guess it's a calculated risk. It's not too bad. <laughs> he knows he's going for a holiday to the farm. There he is. Thanks to Matt, these crocs will enjoy a long life, just not here. Instead, they're being taken further north, away from where they can do harm. He's big. He is very big. And he doesn't like being in there. No. Today's catch has been good, but still down there somewhere remains the biggest croc of all. Tonight, deep in the swamp, Matt will be back on the hunt. This is probably the most dangerous part that you'll get catching crocodiles because of how close you're going to come to them. It's going to rock, Sam, so just don't freak out. God, listen to it breathing. She's not really big enough to do much damage to an animal, though, is she? Not now, no. But she'll grow up. Yeah. Big. This far is big. big. Be gentle. Big, big, big. Back up, back up, back up. Just don't hang any feet or anything over the edge of the boat. How big do you think, Matt? Yeah, he'll come out that side too, Sam. Is he under the boat? Yeah. Oh my god. Ah! Ah! Quick! 
Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Matt decides it's no longer safe for us to stay on board a boat less than half the length of the crocodile. Watch your heads now. Everyone be... Look out! You got him? Look out! <gasps> Yeah, let him go down in the water, in the water. And take this very steady. He's a really battered and bruised croc. Well, he's a crocodile that fights for his territory and his, I guess, his women as well. It's a huge catch, but Matt is deflated. It's not Australia's biggest croc, and it's not great company either. Not that Matt demands much in the way of company. A cool pond and a cold-blooded reptile will do the trick. You're a gorgeous guy. Why are you still single? I move too much. Travel and... I've had, I've had relationships. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, it slows you down. I don't like being slowed down. <laughs> this, this is my love of my life. This, this is life. For Matt, the search goes on. His trap is empty. No big croc. In the eternal battle between man and beast, this fight is unresolved. His mission is incomplete. What if you don't catch him? And we don't catch him. Send a story. But I think one day we'll catch him. Mm -hmm.